solving homogeneous equations, ax equals to zero, and putting the answer in parametric vector form. In other words, we're determining the solution set for ax equals to zero. And since it's specifically equal to zero, that is also called the null space of A. The null space of A is defined to be the solution set for AX equals to zero. For our first example, we'll solve AX equals to zero, where A is this matrix right here. To solve a system of equations, we need to put our matrix into echelon form, and then into our echelon form, and then into our reduced echelon form. Now, often when I'm solving a system of equations, I'll have my matrix A, and then I'll do an augmented matrix with a bunch of zeros for my constant term. My constant term right here is zero. But row operations, you know, zero minus zero is just zero. So any of these row operations, zero divided by two is still zero. It's not going to affect anything. So I frequently don't write out my augmented matrix. I'll frequently just write out my coefficient matrix when I'm doing AX equals to zero. If I'm doing AX equals to B, then I have to carry along the Bs because the row operation would affect the terms within my vector B. But for zero, you know, row operation, zero minus zero is zero, so we can just work with the coefficient matrix. But if you prefer to keep the augmented matrix, you can. So we're solving AX equals to zero, where A is row equivalent to this. So we now have it in our reduced echelon form. So we can now solve the matrix. If you like to see it in augmented form, we can always put those zeros back in again. So we can now see that we've got four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And we know which ones are pivots and which one corresponds to free variables. Our first non-zero term in each row, as long as we're in echelon form, will give us our pivot columns. And then the remaining columns are our free variable columns. So I want to solve for x1, x2, etc. I want to solve for all of my variables. And I want to solve for all of them in terms of my free variable x4 right here. I can take a look at my first equation. And so for my first equation right here, I can read 1x1 plus 2x4 equals to 0. So 1x1 plus 2x4 equals to 0. And so I get that my x1 equals to moving the 2x4 over to the other side, minus 2x4. I can then see that in my second equation, I have x2, so 1x2 plus 2x4 equals to 0. Moving the 2x2 over to the other side, I've got x2 equals to minus 2x4. In my third equation, I can see that I've got 1x3 plus x4 equals to 0. Moving the x4 over to the other side, I've got x3 is minus x4. x4 will simply be x4 in terms of x4. So I've now solved for all four of my variables. So I have solved the equation, but now we want to put our answer in parametric vector format. Well, to get it into vector format is easy. I just turn both of these sides into a vector. And then I no longer need four equality signs, so I can get rid of these. And I now have my equation in vector format. But I do want to pull out my x4. So this e thing says the same thing as we had on our last page. x1, our first coordinate, does have to equal to our first coordinate over here. So it is minus 2x4. So we get the same one as we had on the previous slide. But I want to factor out the x4. So pulling an x4 from everything, I can see I have minus 2x4. So minus 2, minus 2, minus 1x4 and 1x4. And thus, we now have our solution in parametric vector format. In our next example, I'm not even going to tell you what the original matrix B is. Whatever matrix you have, if you want to solve an equation, we want to solve an equation, we need to put it into reduced echelon form. So I now have it in terms of reduced echelon form. I can note that I am solving my homogeneous, so I want to make it augmented. And I can see where my pivots are. 
first non-zero term in the row, first non-zero term in the row, first non-zero term, which because it's in reduced echelon form are all at once. And I can also see what my free variables are. So my x1 variable is a free variable, my x4 variable is a free variable, x2, x3, and x5 all correspond to pivot columns. So thus I know I want to solve for x1 through x5, but I want to write them as functions of x1 and x4. So if you don't mind notation, we are writing all our xi's in terms of x1 and x4. If you don't like notation, you can ignore that. We just want to solve for x1 and uh, through x5 in terms of x1 and x4. I'll start off with the easy ones this time. x1 is equal to x1 in terms of x1 and x4. x4 is equal to x4 in terms of x1 and x4. And so I've got x1 is x1 and x4 is x4, so I've got two variables already. I now need to take a look at my equations. I've got 1x2 plus 8x4 equals to 0. Moving the 8x4 over to the other side, I've got minus 8x4. Then I can have the 1x3 minus 6x4. Moving the minus 6x4 to the other side, I've got x3 is 6x4. And for my last equation, I can see that 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1x5 equals to 0. I've got 1x5 equals to 0, or in other words, x5 equals to 0. I now need to factor out my x1 and my x4, so I will have a vector that I'll multiply by x1 for when I factor that out, and a vector for when I factor out x4. For my x1 term, I've got in my first row, I've got one x1, no x1s in any of the other rows for this matrix right here. It's just the one x1 right here. For my x4s, however, I have zero x4s in the first row, minus eight x4s in the second row. In the third row, I've got six x4s. In the fourth row, I've got one x4. And in the last row, I've got zero x4s. So thus, I now have my answer in parametric vector format, and I can see that my x1 equals to 1x1 plus 0x4, my 8x4 is 0x1 plus minus 8x4, etc. If you prefer, you can also put in this intermediate stage, where I take this vector right here, and I divide it up between all my x1 terms, and all my x4 terms. So I have an x1 term in my first row, zeros elsewhere. I have a 0x1 in my first column, and these are my x4 terms. So if you prefer, you can break it up here, but I think it's nicer if you can more quickly go straight to the parametric vector form. So we now want to solve cx equals to 0, where c is this matrix right here. As before, we want to determine all our pivots. So we have four pivot columns and one free variable column, our x5 right here. So with this, I know I've got to solve for my variables x1 through x5. So I want to solve for x1 through x5, where x1 through x4 correspond to pivot columns, and x5 is my free variable which means I need to solve for all my variables in terms of x5. I know x5 being a free variable will just be equal to itself, x5. And now I can solve for x1 plus 5x5 equals a 0. We can move that 5x5 over to get minus 5x5. x2 will equal to 3x5 when I move this minus 3x5 over. x3 well, if I take a look at this, I've got 1x3 equals to 0. My x3 equals to 0. x4, moving the minus 5x5 over, I've got x4 equals to x5. 
And now I can factor out my x5 and get minus 5, 3, 0, 1, 1. And thus I now have my answer in parametric vector format. You can go straight from the reduced echelon form to this matrix. Just be careful that you don't put things in the wrong row. I, generally speaking, always write down this middle term here, because otherwise I might accidentally miss, for example, this 0 right here. The fact that my x3 equals a 0, maybe I might have missed that. Uh, so just to avoid errors, I like to put in this middle step. But you can actually go right here and notice that x1 is equal to minus 5x5, so I've got that. Um, x2 is equal to minus, is equal to plus 3x5, so I've got that. x3 is 0, x4 is 1x5, and then my free variable of 1 right there. Um, it's the free variable terms that you need to make sure you have in the right spot. In this case, our free variable terms at the end, so that was helpful but free variables can occur any place within your matrix. In our next example, we again identify our pivots, so x1, x2, and x3 all correspond to pivot columns, but our x4, x5, and our x6 are all free variable columns. So if I want to solve for x1 through x6, I know that my x4 and x5 and x6, they are all free variables. So I just need to solve for x1, x2, and x3 in terms of the other variables. So I've got minus 7x4, so moving that over gives me 7x4 when I move it to the other side, plus 2x5, move that over, minus 2x5, that's my x1. For my second row, I've got x2 plus x4. So moving that over, I've got x2 is minus x4. And then for my last equation, x3 moving will equal to, if I move this over to the other side, minus 5x4, and then plus 4x5. Now that we have it in this format, we can get all my x4 terms together all my x5 terms together and all my x6 terms together. So in terms of my three free variables, notice I will have a vector for each of, for each of the free variables I will have a vector once I put it into parametric vector format. One of the reasons I know that is because I'll always, if it's a free variable, x6 will equal to x6, so I will have a 1 here, zeros elsewhere. x5 will equal to x5, so I'll have a 1 here, and zeros elsewhere. So 1x5. x4 will equal to x4, so I'll have a 1x4, and 0 elsewhere. And so I can see I'll definitely have the three columns, I just need to figu figure out the remaining three rows. So for, I can see I've got a 7, a minus 1 and a minus 5 for my x4 terms. For my x5 terms, I've got a minus 2, 0, and 4. So minus 2, 0, and 4. And for my x6, x6 only appeared in this last one here, so it's zeros there. And thus, we now have our answer in parametric vector format right here. And do notice we do have this 1x4 plus zeros for my free variable term, 0 plus 1x5, and it's only your pivot ones, these pivot ones here, where I have more interesting terms up there. In our last example, we can see that we've got our pivots. So I've got four pivot columns, leaving me with three free variable columns. So now I've got seven unknowns. So I need to solve for x1 through x7 this time, getting everything in terms of my free variables x1, x4, and x7. So I've got my x1. So I'll fill in my 
free variables first just because I know what they are very easily. x1 will equal to x1, x4 equals to x4, and x7 equals to x7. My x2, looking at this equation, will x2 will equal to 5x4 minus 5x7, so 5x4 minus 5x7. My x3 will be 7x4 plus 3x, well, my x3 will be minus 7x4 plus 3x7, so minus 7x4 plus 3x7. So that came from this equation here. My x5, well, 1x5 equals to, if I want my augmented matrix form, I can see my 1x5 equals to 0. And then I've got x6 minus x7 equals to 0, so x6 equals to x7. Again, I'm going to want to write it out, factoring out my x1 term, my x4 term, and my x7 term. I can see from my first row, I have 1x1, 0x4s, and 0x7s. For my second row, I've got 0x1s, 5x4s, minus 5x7s. For my third row, I've got minus 7x4s, sorry, I've got 0x1s zero, zero and minus 7x4s and 3x7s. For my fourth row, that's that free variable row, I've got 1x4, but 0x7s and 0x1s. For x5, that's just 0. So I've got 0x1, 0x4s, and 0x7s. That gives me 0. For my penultimate row, I've got 0x1, 0x4s, and 1x7. And same thing for my last row. And thus, we have our answer in parametric vector format. Again, if you like to, you can go straight from this matrix we can see that I've got my free variable term, my x1. So, oops, I've got my free variable term, x1. x1, I'll only have a 1x1. I won't, x1 will not be in terms of any, you know, x1, when I solve for these other things, we're not going to have any x1 term. My, any time I solve for an x sub i, it will only depend upon x sub j's where j is larger than i. So x2 and x3 will only depend upon x4 and x7. x5 and x6 can only depend upon x7, so only terms that come afterwards. So I can see right away that my x1 term would be this right here. My x4 term, yeah, I can see that my x2 will be, you know, I can go into there. But I think instead of going straight to there, I find it a lot easier to go to this one first. So I would go ahead and write out this matrix first and then factor out my x1, x4, and x7 columns so that I have my answer in parametric vector format.